Hello, welcome to Soulprint Print Intuitive Tarot. I'm so glad you're here today. Um, so this is, first of all, first of all, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the amazing birthday wishes. Although I have to admit, I was really confused. So this is the sequence of events and there's a lot to celebrate, lots and lots to celebrate. So on the 23rd of this month, so Sunday, um, Soulprint Print Intuitive Tarot, this channel, celebrated its one year anniversary. Uh, and we're just over 5,400 subscribers, so I am beyond thrilled. On March 3rd, so in a couple days, um, the Soul Print Insights channel is going to be celebrating its two month anniversary. And we have hit 1,000 subscribers. So whoever the 1,000th subscriber was, thank you, because it's brilliant. That was sort of my hope and my goal and my intention. And it's always so lovely um, when intentions get realized. And the day after that, I am going to be celebrating my birthday on March 4th. So I'm not sure if I misspoke or you guys are incredibly intuitive and just knew that my birthday was coming. But honestly, I thank every single one of you for the wishes. Um, and, you know, I have experienced the um, the energy of your wishes when you send them to me, whether it was for Christmas or for my you know, medical procedure. And it is just the loveliest, loveliest feeling. And of course, as you know, that is what inspired the whole positive energy circle because um, it, it's just a lovely feeling when all of that love and best wishes comes sort of flooding at you. So I thank each and every one of you. And for any of you who are curious, yes, there's going to be cake for Soul Print Intuitive. There's going to be cake for me. My daughter's actually celebrates her birthday the day before mine. So there's going to be cake for hers. And there's going to be cake for Soul Print Insights. Because in this family, man, if we can't come up with a good reason to have cake, well, we just make one up. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, all right, so here we go. It is February 28th. So now we know, right? We know. Now we know what it is that is going to bring down Trump's government. And we know it's going to bring him down. Because unless pigs start flying in the sky, there is no expectation that he is going to be able to survive this. I mean, the stock market is crashing. Um, they have, you've experienced the worst one day, um, drop since the financial crisis of 08. And so this is, this is cool. Okay. I mean, it's not cool because people are suffering, but it's kind of cool, right? This is how karma works. He spent all that energy blaming the crisis on Obama. Now, Unless I'm really, really wrong, I seem to remember that that crisis actually happened before Obama took office. But of course, they couldn't blame whatever the previous president, Bush, I guess. They couldn't blame him. It, it was because I remember very clearly thinking when Obama took office, like, oh, my God, what a disaster he's absolutely walking into. But the Republicans were going to blame a Republican, so they blamed Obama, and they ragged on him, and they ragged on him, and Trump is still bitching and complaining about it, even though Obama was certainly able to reverse everything and get you guys on an amazing, you know, growth um, surge. So guess what, Trump? This is this is karma, right? This is what happens. You are now going to experience the very, very same thing that you were blaming somebody else for. This is karma in action. And it's a huge decrease. I mean, apparently you have dropped something like, the stock market has dropped something like 10.5% um, or, or a bit more than that in the last seven days. Um, and there is something like $6 trillion that has been lost in that stock market. I am pretty sure it's in the United States. So, you know, and of course, unfortunately, Trump couldn't keep his big mouth shut and he kept trying to take credit not only for Obama's successes, but, you know, and everybody else's. And he wanted to take credit for the fact that he was the you know most amazing president since Lincoln. Um, so now he owns it right now. He owns the wild, crazy fluctuations in the stock market as everybody is trying to cope with this Corona 
virus. And of course, the coronavirus is the other thing that is really, go really going to rock not only his presidency, but his entire administration. I mean, he has Pence in charge of this thing. God help you all, okay? I do not know a lot about what happened when Pence was governor um, in terms of the HIV crisis, but what I have gathered is it was appalling. And, you know, this is the thing, right? Blood on your hands is blood on your hands, Pence. If you have blood on your hands from that, well, guess what? You have an opportunity this time to not have blood on your hands, to make sure that people's lives are not in jeopardy. And guess what? You are being a little Putin, or sorry, Putin, well, that's not probably a Freudian slip at all. Uh, Putin, Trump, puppet. And you're going to do exactly what Trump says, irregardless of the fact that I'm quite sure your religious bring, upbringing tells you you're not supposed to behave that way. But he's going to. This is karma. This is karma in action. Um, and, and, you know, one hopes and prays, one hopes and prays that um, there's already been 3,000 deaths worldwide. Something like 60,000 people have been um, infected with this thing worldwide. And you hope and you pray that none of Trump's supporters get this thing. And you hope and you pray that none of them die as a result of it. But the reality is you have Sean Hannity on Fox News saying, oh, you know, the Democrats are just screaming like chicken little and the sky's not falling in. I can tell you the sky's not falling and everybody's overreacting. Don't pick on the president. He has it under control. Um, you have him literally hamstringing the CDC so they actually can't get the information out that people are looking for. Um, and so there really is a little bit of, a, I, I don't want to say false information, although I think that some of the numbers really aren't all that accurate. Um, but certainly there is a restricted flow of information. And you have, you know, so between Trump and Fox, you have whatever it is, 35%, 30% of the American public who are significantly more at risk because they believe this is nothing, nothing. There's nothing to worry about. Don't fuss. And I am not trying to cause panic, but I am also saying when you have something that is accelerating this quickly, it's really um, like malpractice to say, don't worry about it. You're just, everybody's overreacting. This is all because of the democratic debate because they're fools. I, I, it's a good thing my jaw is hinged or I would have lost it. It would have just fallen on the ground and I would have probably stepped on it. So these people are under the illusion that there is nothing to be concerned about. Is Trump going to keep on holding rallies? Yeah, of course he is because he needs that ad adulation. He needs that feed. And because of that, those people that go to those rallies are at risk because they're not doing anything. There's no sort of preparedness or awareness that they really do have to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more cautious, walk around with that hand sanitizer, you know. Um, and so, yeah, he's absolutely putting the very people who elected him and the very people he needs to elect him again in significant jeopardy. And at some point, that's going to start falling in on him and they're going to start turning because you know what? You can love Trump until the cow comes home. But if you start experiencing severe illness, never mind death, uh, because he's not telling you the truth because his ego is involved and he doesn't want to upset the stock markets, which are already tanking anyways. That's what you got. Right. They're going to get mad. It, it's, it's not going to be a good situation. So from what I can tell energetically, you know what? Absolutely. This is going to be a big part of the part and parcel of what brings this presidency down. Come on down. I have a question. I want to explore this. I want to see exactly um, what we can anticipate going forward. Um, and I'm not going to go on and on about the coronavirus. And frankly, I'm not even going to go on and on about the stock market, I hope, because of course, I'm never exactly quite sure what I'm going to say. But I really just want to focus this on how Trump is coping with this. Um, you know, there was a lot of speculation that he was probably um, a little bit over medicated. <clears throat> 
um, when he gave that rambling, ridiculous, full of lies uh, speech at the White House in the, the briefing room. Um, so let's see how he's coping. Come on down. Okay, so um, Trump through crisis, Trump through crisis, Trump through crisis. What fell out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Eight of Cups fell out. So somebody's leaving in disappointment, right? Somebody is going to be sent on their way. Probably couldn't happen to a better guy. All right. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So this is exactly what's happening right now. You have Trump pushing back with all of his might. He is defending himself. He is defensive. He is trying to spin things. Don't forget the wants are about communications very often. And so that's exactly, it's about words, right? So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to communicate one thing when the whole world can see that the whole world cannot see that what he is saying is absolutely, it's not only that it's not accurate, it's a blatant disregard for the truth. It's a flat out lie. And worse, it's a lie for self-preservation and self-interest. The world is watching. I, I want to tell you, honestly, if you're looking for, um, Accurate information. I know Marianne um, posted at Revealing Light posted um, the name of somebody, a, a doctor out in Britain, and I have forgotten his name, but you guys are amazing. It was all through my feed yesterday on yesterday's video. Um, and you can get some really good information from him about what's going on. The World Health Organization. Um, those are the places you need to go to. You almost need to go um, for your information to a place that is not in any way shape or form um controlled by trump or um you know that he can um exert pressure on all right um so and and of course you got the stock market and that is serious i mean it's not just you right it's not just america all of the stock markets globally are really, really having a hard time right now uh, because there is panic and there is fear. And frankly, you know, so one just creates the other, right? People are scared because of the coronavirus. They start selling off their stocks. That starts to bring down the stock market. People start get to get, you know, worried about their financial security for those who actually have money in the stock market. For the rest of the world, they start to actually worry if they're going to have a job and if their rent is going to get paid and if there's going to be, you know, the stuff available that they need and want to buy. So everybody's watching. This is a world deal. Okay, this is not about Trump and his little fantasy of being king with the crooked crown. This is <clears throat> the world. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. This is a world event. And it is a world event for the coronavirus. It is a world event for um the stock markets. Unfortunately, it is more of a localized event for leadership stupidity. There are secrets being kept. Okay, I'm sorry. And I don't think that this is all exactly and exclusively within the United States. I think that some of the numbers are being softened a little bit or some of the information is being softened a little bit because they don't want to cause a, they, right, the leaders um, worldwide, are trying to really minimize um, the amount of global panic that is going on, okay? So I'm not saying you're being flat lied to, but I am saying it really does feel to me like some things are being kept quiet, and slowly but slowly, they're going to come to light. More and more information is going to come out. Um, and so we'll get a clear picture of everything that's going on. But for right now, be mindful of the fact that all the details are not out there, and be mindful of the fact that it will continue to come to light, but it's going to be a bit of a, a process. <clears throat> Hang on a second. For those of you who are concerned about my coughing or my throat, don't be. This is a fairly regular event in my world come spring. So, and you know, it's it's coming. Up here in Alberta, it's it's thinking about it. It's taking its time, but you know, 
The snow's starting to melt, so spring is coming. I digress. Be prepared for the fact that you're going to get a lot of misinformation coming out of Trump's mouth. And by extension, you're going to get a lot of misinformation coming out of the administration. And I wouldn't trust one single thing that comes out of Pence's mouth because he has a history of not being able to handle these health crises uh, in any sort of a um, adequate way. So expect a lot of spin, right? Expect a lot of poo-pooing and people saying, oh, there's overreactions. Again, to everything, to the stock market, to the virus, you know, to the Democratic conventions. It, it, it doesn't matter. Everything's kind of gone into a spin cycle right now. Um, and anything that can be said or done by Trump or, or the, the flunkies around him is going to be said and done to try to keep that backsplash from coming at him. But unfortunately, you know, since he wanted to own everything, um, he now is responsible for it. And trust me, he's not going to take responsibility. And the spinners are not going to suggest he should take responsibility. But... We're not fools, and we know exactly whose shoulders this is landing on. So expect spin, expect distortion. Oh yeah, okay, you know what? He's out of control now, all right? He is, he is out of control. Um, his emotions are so over the top, the deterioration is becoming more and more and more pronounced and I don't mean month by month you can see a change I'm talking almost daily you can witness this deterioration of his mental capacity of his ability to actually understand what is going on if you watch that press conference the other day um you know and he made that some comment about the fact that oh don't worry about it you know the the um Oh, what is that word? The um, stuff that you get inoculated, the vaccine. Uh, the vaccine's going to be available, oh, you know, in a month or so, but don't worry about that even because, you know, by the time spring comes, it's all going to be gone anyways because the heat's going to burn it off. Give me a break. Um, but anyway, so that, that doctor, whoever he was, jumped onto the, mic, you know, the podium and basically said, okay, this is how it works. You know, it's going to be two or three months before we're ready to do testing, and then you do testing, and then it's another three months before, and then it's another six months before. You're looking at a year before there is any sort of a vaccine for this. And Trump literally was like looking at the sky and looking around. It was as if he was completely incapable of comprehending one word that was being said because it wasn't in keeping with his own internal dialogue. So whatever is being said to him that he doesn't agree with these days, he's almost completely incapable of even absorbing what is being said. And so because he can't absorb what's being said, he continues to live in his bubble of misinformation and lies where he is king. I think I'm probably going to name this video King of the Crooked Crown because that really is, you know, kind of what's going on here, right? He just lives in this incredibly dysfunctional fantasy world. And the people around him who are allowing this to happen, particularly his family, um, it is disgraceful and they should be ashamed. But like him, their own self-interest take precedent over anything else. As the judgment gets harsher, and as he continues to try to steer this sinking ship um, into calmer waters, the deterioration and the rages are going to increase. Part of the reason that he handed this whole thing off to Pence, literally, is because he doesn't want the handling of the coronavirus anywhere on his plate. He's, he has found the scapegoat. But it's not going to work simply because Trump and Pence are sort of um, tied together as president and vice president. And like I said, when people actually start getting sick and they realize there, there's no testing kits, 
There's nowhere near the number of testing kits. There is um, no protocols in place. Um, people who yesterday, of course, the big news was that there's like another whistleblower. My goodness, they're going to be the bane of Trump's existence. Um, that whistleblower was saying, you know what? The, the people who were dealing with the people who were coming off the ship, um, they weren't in protective gear. They weren't protected at all from the coronavirus and more. Then they got onto planes and they were flying around the country. So the more the judgment comes down on him, the, the kind of the more insane it's going to get. And he is not going to be able to push this off on Pence, although Lord knows he is going to give it a mighty try. There is worry and anxiety. There is worry and anxiety for everyone. Okay, people of the United States and by extension, of course, people of the globe. I mean, this is hitting everybody. So everybody's concerned. They're concerned about the virus. They're concerned about the stock market. They're concerned about a shortage of supplies and they're secure. They're concerned about their jobs actually holding on to some stability or security because if things go really, really bad, even if it's only bad with the stock market, it's not good. Okay, so there's a lot of anxiety going on. There's anxiety within the administration. There is anxiety um, within the people of countries. There is anxiety within the leaders. And then you have Trump off in La La Land. Now, <clears throat> don't lose hope. There are people who are doing everything they can to harness this fool, right? To sort of contain the idiot. And, and you know, again, this card not only talks to um, greed and those kinds of things, it also speaks to addic addiction. And I'm not going to say any more than that because you're smart and I don't need to. But there are people in places who are trying to move into position to contain him and to get this situation moving forward with at least some semblance of professionalism, care, and concern for the people who are being impacted. Um, and let us not forget, Trump is not a young man, and he is not a young man with a good immune system. And so in many ways, he really is in the higher um, category for risk. Just saying, I'm just saying, Things are going to continue to move forward sort of on all fronts. Um, and, you know, there's going to be a little bit of ups and hills. There's going to kind of be a bit of good news and then it's going to fall back down. And as that continues, he just continues to get more and more delusional. He just continues to retreat farther and farther into this kind of fantasy world that he lives in. And he really doesn't pay attention to what is going on. Don't be at all surprised if there are more whistleblower type reports coming out. Um, because, you know, that is how, I mean, that Azar guy, whoever he is, that Homeland Security, not, he's not Homeland Security, health and something. I'm not sure. But anyways, this Azar guy, um, who was head of some agency that should be taking care of this and jumping right on this, he flatlined to the um, oversight committees like yesterday saying he doesn't, he's not aware of anybody having a problem with the protocols, which quote, were not in place. Um, meanwhile, he either threatened to fire or fired the whistleblower because they didn't want her talking. Interesting that the whistleblower is a female, isn't it? More news is coming out, more anxiety is coming out, more worry is coming out, and Trump and the Republicans are going to continually try to pivot to everything is fine and the stock, bar the stock market is just going through a minor correction. Don't be concerned. Hello, Karma. Yeah. So... I can't tell you how bad this is going to get, but I have to tell you, I don't get a great feeling about this, okay? 
Um, and again, I am not trying to cause panic. I am. I don't want anybody to sort of get really stressed out and anxiety ridden because there are forces in place that are moving in to try to um, calm this situation down. And um, the help is coming not only from the amazing people on the planet, but divine energy is coming in to try to help calm this situation down and move it forward. But Trump literally has been trapped by his own lies, by his own bragging, by his own need to control everything, his own need to take credit for everything. And this thing is going to accelerate more and more quickly. And as it does, he's going to become more and more unhinged. Oopsie. Yeah. So again, you have divine intervention. You've got, um, you know, people are working together. It is really only Trump and to some extent the people at Fox News and uh, to some extent his supporters who really, really are being um, kept in the dark. Probably, frankly, along with the people of Russia. Because it's very interesting that Russia has reported nothing. But of course, that's because... The people in Russia aren't allowed to know anything except what, you know, Putin wants them to know. So, uh, yeah, there's friction going on behind the scenes. They're trying to keep a balance. Even the people, even the Trump whisperers are sort of no longer able to connect with him and, and pull him back. Um, he really is off. Um, okay, this is the expression, all right? He's barking crazy. Just barking crazy. That's what's running the White House right now. Yeah. So, you know, again, um, no one can control him. No one can contain him. He thinks, um, he thinks that as long as he's friends with um, the leaders of other countries, that somehow that magically is just going to make everything right. Because again, in, in Trump's world, friendship and loyalty is the most important thing. And so he feels as long as he has that in place, that really he is protected. And this is one of those situations where he's not going to be protected. There's disappointment coming. There's sadness coming. And he's, bless his stupid soul, is going to keep on charging ahead, okay? Because he just doesn't know any better. He just doesn't. But again, we have had three aces. Um, you had the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Swords, and the Ace of Wands. So, you know what? There really is an attempt to um, try to get this thing under control, do what they can to help um, get the information out, get out whatever products or protocols need to be put in place to help um, kind of move this situation forward in a way that, um, you know, tries to stabilize things. And again, whether it is the virus, whether it is the stock market, or whether it is the king with the crook crooked crown, there's a lot of efforts being made to stabilize, but it's not going to happen today or tomorrow. Um, so two quick notes. Um, there is going to be a video put out next week on the Soulprint Insights channel. And I'm not sure what day because it's sort of in process right now. But there is going to be a video coming out um, about crystals. And I have somebody joining me who is far more knowledgeable and clever when it comes to crystals than I am. Um, and so we're going to be putting together a video. So those of you who are interested in crystals and their purposes and when you might use them, um, look for that on the Insights channel next week. And for those of you interested in the healing um, circle, the energy um, circle that is coming out this Sunday, it is going to be on uh, the people and this virus. Um, that's going to be where we're sending our energy, not only to the people who are fighting the virus, um, not only the, the families who have been impacted by it, but we're also going to be sending wisdom um, to those people who are um, fighting it, 
you know, uh, in terms of doctors and medical professionals, the government officials who need to have our best interests at heart and clarity of mind and intelligence to be able to get that information out. We're going to be sending them some energy to help that situation along. Um, and so that's kind of on the agenda over the next few days. So take a look out for that. Um, again, thank you so much for the wonderful um, birthday wishes. I, I loved every one of them and I'm so grateful and thank you. Um, there have been some incredible donations coming in to me lately and I very, very much appreciate that. That is lovely and your generosity um, for some reason continues to astound me, although I don't know why I'm astounded because I know you are amazing, generous, loving people who are caring and um, positive and, and, you know, trying to make the best of difficult times and situations. Um, and for those of you who are interested in the box below, um, there is the information if you're at all interested in getting a private reading. So stay safe, be well, take care. And we'll see you really soon. Have a fabulous weekend. And if anything really crazy happens over the weekend, look for me because I'll, I'll pop out with a new video. Bye-bye.